we are about to begin a service of lament with the Presbytery of Chicago. My name is Liz Valle. I teach worship at, and preaching at McCormick Theological Seminary. And I am a minister of the Word and Sacraments member of the Presbytery of San Juan, Puerto Rico. As we begin, as we get ready to worship together, we ask that you bring a candle to have it nearby and we will all light that candle together. And we ask that you keep your microphone muted unless it is your time to speak. We ask that um, you also keep it muted while you are singing, but we do encourage you to sing along. Set up your space, make sacred, separated for purposes of this communal worship and have your candle nearby ready to light it when the time comes. Let us worship together. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Steer up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. We are now invited to light a candle to remember that this service is addressed to the light of light, our faithful Savior, who is among us. Please light your candle as we listen to the hymn, God Weeps With Us, Who Weep and Mourn. You may find this hymn in the hymnal Glory to God, number 787.
book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. Again, I saw all the oppressions that are practiced under the sun. Look, the tears of the oppressed with no one to comfort them. On the side of their oppressors there was power with no one to comfort them. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Holy source of life, you created humankind in your image, but we have created systems to classify people and deem some humans more in your image than others. In your mercy, God, forgive us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Giver of life, disease is taking too many lives while we fail to provide equal access to health care. In your mercy, God, forgive us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Restorer of life, racism kills often with impunity while we fail to provide equal access to justice. In your mercy, God, forgive us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. We will now build together a wall of laments. We are all invited to share our complaints before God for the sorrows and injustices we are witnessing. We remember the lives that have been lost in 2020 due to the pandemic and as a result of racial injustice. 
We lament the way these two are related. Please type your laments in the chat box.
Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm the Reverend Denise Anderson, and I bring you greetings from the Presbyterian Mission Agency, where I serve as coordinator for racial and intercultural justice in Louisville, Kentucky. Our scripture reading for this time together comes from Mark's Gospel, the fourth chapter, verses 35 through 41. Let us listen now for God's word to us. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. Friends, I want to address all of us from the topic of standing in the storm. One of my um, responsibilities in my role is to resource alongside a, a colleague of mine a wonderful group of people who were appointed to the Special Committee on Racism, Truth, and Reconciliation. And this group has been charged with doing a listening campaign uh, to assess the stories and, and, and bring out themes among those of us who have long been impacted by racism in our systems. Part of this group's responsibility is to meet regularly. Some of those meetings are in person. The last in-person meeting that they had before the COVID-19 pandemic uh, ramped up, as it were, was in Montgomery, Alabama at the Equal Justice Initiative as they took in some really difficult history and wrestled with our place as the Presbyterian Church in that history and what themes we should be paying attention to in our own systems. So after a very productive and enlightening and educational couple of days together in Montgomery, Alabama, it was time to come home. And wouldn't you know it, right as we were all dispersing, an amazing storm blows through Montgomery, Alabama. Flights are canceled left and right. It's increasingly difficult to get people on their way. And sadly, we know that that storm system produced tornadoes that had killed 11 people. We were trying to make sure that everyone had a right ho route home. And my colleague and I, after our flight back to Louisville had been canceled for the umpteenth time, we got the last, and I mean the last, rental car available. And we drove the rest of the way home to Louisville in the middle of a storm. Storms can be really awe-inspiring. I really enjoy watching thunderstorms roll in on a hot day. They're, they're ominous, but they're also really, really amazing to watch. But that's when you're observing them from relative safety. When you're in them, 
when you're being battered by the elements, it's a different story. They're quite frightening. Storms have a way of throwing us off of our track, whether they're meteorological storms or other kinds of storms, pandemics, disease, old enemies of racism and hatred. Our committee's visit to the Equal Justice Initiative had us confronting the storms of racial terror, storms that unfortunately don't seem to be weakening, even in the midst of a pandemic. Storms that join Wednesday night Bible studies in Charleston, South Carolina. Storms that roll in on the anniversary of Denmark Vesey's slave revolt at the very church he founded. Storms that take the lives of nine people. Storms that put knees on necks in the middle of the street. Storms that come in while you sleep. Spraying bullets. Storms that we never seem to know are coming. How could this happen? In many ways, the world in which I live is very different from the world in which my parents and grandparents lived, but also it's quite the same. What do I do with that realization, friends? Because it would suggest that irrespective of whatever progress we've been able to make, the things that my ancestors struggled against might be insurmountable. Maybe we'll never eradicate racism and race-based hatred. Maybe we'll never achieve true parity in society. And that's why when pandemics come along, they just expose our disparities. At least that's what it seems like sometimes, no? It's like psychologically, there is this giant, a Goliath, standing right before us, taunting the army in front of him and balking at our inefficacy. He is the undefeated heavyweight champion. He can't be brought down. He can't be beat. Friends, this is our Goliath 2020. And it seems as if he's relishing in our inability to confront him. I often wonder where along the route the baton was dropped. Why does my reality in many ways look eerily similar to that of history books? When we went to the Equal Justice Initiative, I could point out an ancestor of mine who was memorialized on the installation that names the known, the known victims of lynchings and, and racial terror. Why is it not any safer, it seems, for me than it was for my ancestor. The times in which we find ourselves leave us bereft. We feel helpless. We don't know what to do. We don't know where to start. The monsters are both new and they also predate us. What can we do to take them down? Goliath stands before us in 2020, just taunting us, towering over us, waging warfare, not just on our bodies, but on our psyches, our very souls. And we who are before him and all of what we've been able to do and capable of doing and all of our apparent progress and all of our education and our resources and all of our cunning and cleverness and all of our God-given wonderfulness stand impotent and afraid. How is it, friends, that you and I, who are God's elect, are tossed back and forth by this storm? We who are endowed with so much materially, spiritually, in so many other areas of life. How did we get here? What happened? What happened? 
You know, I have a lot of problems with David as a king, as a husband, as a father. But, you know, I love David as a youth. And I look to young David today. I wish I could sit at ruddy, handsome little David's feet for a second when he heard Goliath's taunts and said, wait a minute, this isn't right. We've grown accustomed and too comfortable with our affliction. But little David steps up and says, put me in the game. And this is not naivete from which David speaks, friends. This is based on his experiences. He's fought lions before, he's fought bears before. And no, lions and bears aren't Philistines. Lions and bears aren't pandemics. Lions and bears aren't systems of inequity. But fighting the lions and the bears helped David develop the skill set he needed to defeat an arrogant Philistine. I wonder, friends, if we are able in these difficult times to give credit to God for what God has instilled in us up until now. So much of these days have us feeling powerless, but where are the blessings that have been placed in our bosom? I don't think that David was the only one among him who was qualified and capable of beating Goliath, but he was the only one who seemed to believe he could. He was the only one who was willing. He was the only one who thought not to look at his limitations, but focus instead on his abilities. He was the only one confident enough in the Lord who would strengthen him. You and I are called to face old giants and new threats. We are called to do this time and time again. Sometimes we're called to do things that have not been done before, at least not in our lifetimes. And it's easy to be surrounded by doubt and paralyzed by fear. But I ask us all, what in our past has prepared us for our present task? How has God been conditioning us even now to do something no one has been able to do yet? And what confidence do we have that God will indeed bring us out of this? I look at the story from Mark 4. And you know, it, I question where the disciples' fear really came from. Was it warranted? I mean, sure, there's this threat in front of them, yes. But I ask that question because Jesus, from the very beginning, had told them to get in the boat. From the very beginning, Jesus had told them to go to the other side. They went there. They were in that storm because of where Jesus had told them to go. Was Jesus leading them in the midst of a disaster? There were other boats with him. Jesus was on a mission. And if he says, let's go to the other side, oh, I have to believe that it's because he wants to get us there. Friends, God is calling us apparently into some stormy situations. God is calling us in the, into the fight for justice at all corners of the, of the world. God is calling us into the building of the kingdom, the reign of God. God is calling us to create what some of us have never seen and thus can't even imagine. God is calling us into what we so need to see. And that work is going to be difficult. 
They're going to be winds. They're going to be rains. It's going to shake us. There will be violent and frightening twists and turns. There will be things that rock us to our very core. There will be times when our faith is shaken or even depleted. Fighting a pandemic is no small feat. Dismantling systems is no small feat. Advocating for the rights of all people is no easy task. Doing ministry where it's most needed and in ways that you weren't trained for ain't no walk in the park. We're going to face power. We're going to face powerful people who may not listen to us. We may have relationships that dissolve. We'll lose people along the way. And we have lost so much already. We may be called everything but a child of God, have everything that is dear to us taken away, and even our very existence may be threatened. We will have times when we question our own mettle and whether or not we actually can handle this. We might think our demise is imminent and wonder if God or anyone else for that matter cares that we perish. But there will also be provision. There will be the lessons of bygone days that somehow come to our remembrance and come in handy for today. There will be slingshots and smooth rocks. And we have to find something within us that helps us know that from the very beginning and to the very end, we have Emmanuel, God with us, the promise of the Great Commission, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. God was with us at the beginning, God is with us, and God will be with us. So friends, let us encourage one another to use what we've been given and do not despise the gifts that we have as ineffective as they may seem. Do not think we need to be anything more than what God has already created in us. Let us stand in this storm. Let us stand in the face of giants let us stand in the midst of rains and winds and waves and let us watch God be God. If you can't believe that, I'm here to believe it for you. We will get through this and there is resurrection power on the other side of a crucifixion to the glory of God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, the one who raises us to new life with Christ. Amen.
Psalm 80, turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see, have regard for your people, give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts, let your face shine, that we may be saved. Y que el amor de Dios y la gracia de nuestro Señor Jesucristo y el poder del Espíritu Santo 
nos acompañe y nos mantenga en unidad ahora y siempre. Amén. sing with us. May your strong 